line E. Well, hopefully that's working now and uh, you can hear me online and you can hear me online and here. So we should be good to begin. Whew. Okay, now that I've found everything, I must find my sermon, my songs, and some peace. Guitar's not tuned, but we'll sing around it. Normally when it's slightly windy, I put a sock over the microphone to make it not make any noise. But I was worried it would be too smelly. So I didn't bring it today. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for the gift of patience that you develop in us every day, especially when we lose little plugs and can't get the sound working at church and the Facebook live feed doesn't work and all those things. You teach us to wait on you. But you're always faithful. You always come through for us. You always make a plan. Because it is on you that we depend in you whom we can trust. And so we thank you. Lord, we come to you as your people who are still struggling and confused by the time that we're in in the world. This pandemic, it's so invisible and so traumatic and so worrying and has made so many changes to the way that we live. We long for the day that we could see smiles on people's faces again and hug each other and shake each other's hands and greet each other. And so for now, Lord, as we fast from all of those things, we pray that we would be comforted by your Holy Spirit, that we would know your real and loving presence, even as we gather some of us here in the parking lot, some in cars, some online, some listening later that you would remind us of the people that we love and who love us, and you would draw us close together. And so, Lord, be with us in this time of worship, we pray. Amen. We sing, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and then hopefully I'll find the key. That's too high. Too high, Gus, too high. Go. Bless, bless, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. 
that's too low. <laughs> oh, worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul Worship His holy name like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end grows near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul Worship His holy Like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Yes, Lord, we thank you that the psalmist teaches us to talk to ourselves, to talk to the deepest part of our being and say, bless the Lord, soul. A reminder to ourselves to just turn from our deepest, inmost being to you, O oh God. And to give you thanks and blessing. To make you the center of our, of our lives, our reason for living, our reason for breathing, our purpose in everything. Lord, we know that that is not just good advice but it is essential advice to us as we live our lives we center our souls on so many things on our bank accounts on our relationships on our health on our businesses and our careers and our status and success but Lord all of those things are just passing you are the one and eternal God the one above all things. And so 
As we call our souls to bless you, O Lord, we ask that you would examine our souls through the power of your Spirit. That your Holy Spirit would help us to see anything wrong in us, any ways in which we turn away from you and pursue our own dreams and visions that aren't yours. Lord, we know that we stumble sometimes through the dark. And we trip over all those obstacles that we set up for ourselves. Clear the way by your light, we pray. Help us to make these difficult journeys in your strength and your power and your grace. So this morning we confess our brokenness and our sin. We confess our helplessness without you. And we remember how when people called out to you, you would call to them and say, My child, your sins are forgiven. And so, Lord, we call out to you as those who need you, who need your help, who need your salvation. We ask for forgiveness of our sins. And we hear your gracious words. My child, your sins are forgiven. And we hear your words of power as you breathe your Holy Spirit into our hearts and lives. Go and sin no more. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever to turn to our psalm for today that's psalm 90 and uh, the title I like is a, is a prayer of Moses the man of God and uh, our reading today is from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 34 that last, uh, those last moments of Moses' life and as we think about someone like Moses I invite us to just think about what kind of words we would like to be able to say at the end of our lives. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. And then from verse 13. Relent, Lord. How long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Amen. Invite us to think of the words of the song, What a Faithful God Have I. 
I'm really having trouble finding the right key today, so thank you for your patience. I'm glad when I cough you don't all run into your cars and hide away. Lord, I come before your throne of grace. I find rest in your presence and fullness of joy. In worship and wonder I behold your face Singing what a faithful God have I What a faithful God have I What a faithful God What a faithful God have I Faithful in every way Lord of mercy, you have heard my cry Through the storm, you're the beacon My song in the night In the shelter of your wings Hear my heart's reply Singing, what a faithful God have I What a faithful God have I What a faithful God What a faithful God have I Faithful in every way Sovereign granting peace from heaven Let me comfort those who suffer With the comfort you have given I will tell of your great love For as long as I live Singing what a faithful God have I What a faithful God have I what a faithful God What a faithful God have I Faithful in every way What a faithful God have I What a faithful God What a faithful God have I Faithful in every way Amen just In a seated moment, just to think about the faithfulness of God Maybe that's a tough thing uh, Just to and if you're watching at home or you're uh, on your own to think about these things but if you're here to uh, to share something in which you've seen God's faithfulness with the people uh, 1.5 meters away from you uh, and just tell them something about how you've seen God's faithfulness through this difficult time and how you can give thanks for that and even if you're at home if you're watching together just take a moment to talk about God's faithfulness to you in that time and while you're doing that I'll just tinkle on the guitar say hello to the people especially the people you didn't come to church with this morning come on guys I know you're Methodist you're allowed to talk to each other
God, you are a wonderful come, come stand over here so folks can hear you. Pardon? Yeah, you, you're going to be a bit hidden, but stand there. Uh, can, they, can you people hear me? Yes. Little can closer. I go higher up? Yeah, perfect. Can I take this off? No, you can expose your face for a second. I'll run away. Okay, you can stand there. No. <laughs> okay, uh, you all know me. I'm Ann Stock, and I've been a member of this church when this foundation was laid here many, many years ago. And I'm leaving next week, and God has been so faithful to me. He's carried me through all these years. And I just want to say to each and every one, and especially to our minister, for the time when my husband died, that he was there to carry me through with Jesus Christ in the difficult times. And I'm leaving here with a sad heart because I must go. I know there's always new changes. We don't always know what the changes have in store for us. But of one thing we are sure, that God never changed. He's always with us. He's with me. He's go with me in my new place. And he will keep me safe there. And it's not nice to make changes. But then God come and he tells us different. And I'm sure at my age there is something else he wants me to do on the other side in Somerset West. And it's a wonderful place. I'm leaving behind the most beautiful people and this lovely table view. But we listen to God and we know where I go, he will lead me and he will take me to places where he wants me to do my little bit at my age today. So people, as we stand outside here this morning, we are so blessed. Fresh air. The birds is running around us. They even sing for us in the trees. How blessed are we to stand here this morning? Stay here and let us ask God for all the things that are happening. The whole world is a new change. But God never changed. Let us keep on praying and know that he will lead us wherever he take us. I don't know what to tell you people, but there is only one God that we can serve. And now Jesus Christ, when I walk into my new place in Somerset West, I'll take all your faces with and all the beautiful prayers that you've been giving us, and especially our ladies' fellowship, Doreen, thank you for the wonderful time that I could spend you and have you as a friend, each one of you. God bless you. Support this church. This church needs you. Your minister needs you. And I'm sure on the other side, there's somebody that needs this old woman. God bless you. And don't stop praying. The more we pray, the more God answers our prayers. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you Minister. Thank you. Let's give thanks. Loving God, we thank you for the people with whom you surround us, the community of faith, those who have gone before us and those who will come after us. We thank you that, that you have been faithful in Anne's life, and that, Lord, she has been faithful to you. Lord, we know that she still witnesses to you at every opportunity. And we know that wherever she goes, she will be a, a light shining of your love and your grace and your mercy. And so, Lord, may your Holy Spirit just bless her with new friends and new companions in Somerset West. And may we never forget people like her who have been an example to us of the way that we should go, the way that we should live. Amen. And you're not allowed to make me cry before I preach. And said, I must still give her a letter to say goodbye. And she says, is it that you don't want me to go to the next church? Well, that's true, I don't. <laughs> but I'll make sure that we, 
we transfer you into their care, and not just with a letter, but a few phone calls too, to make sure that they've got you on their books. <laughs> Thank you. And what are you, 55 now, hey? You're 55 years old now. Your age, and Yeah. You all want to know. Yes. Uh, next year, the 9th of April, I will be 92. 92 next year on the 9th of April. Isn't that the little song that we just sang? Mm. What a faithful God. Mm, what a faithful God. Yeah. Oh, and Anne's healthier than most of us 40 year olds. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Anyways, we, can, we join Moses in Deuteronomy 34. Our journey with Moses has gone from Egypt to Midian to Mount Horeb or Sinai on the Sinai Peninsula where the Lord spoke to Moses before the Israelites. And Exodus sort of goes to that chapter in chapter 20, etc., where we see Moses starting to go up the mountain. Most of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy is God giving rules and laws to the Israelites through Moses. And some of it is the story of their journey through the wilderness. So now we're coming to the end of, of that journey, and we skip past all of that to Deuteronomy chapter 34. Deuteronomy 34, verses 1 to 6. Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah across from Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev and the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms, as far as Zor. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab, in the valley opposite Beth Peor. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, we pray. Amen. We journey from, from the time that Moses stood up there on this, this great mountain and looked down over this whole promised land and was told that, that he couldn't enter that promised land to a vision of Jesus. Moses was opposite Jericho looking down to where Jericho is and we know that on Palm Sunday, in the last week of Jesus' life, Jesus journeyed from that, that town, Jericho, the city of Palms, reminding us of something, to Jerusalem, a day's journey up the hill toward the cross. Jesus' ministry almost traced the history of the kingdom of Israel after they had moved into the Promised Land, baptized in the Jordan, just like the Israelites crossed the Jordan into the Promised Land. Then, doing his ministry in Judea, around Jerusalem, but also north in Galilee, reminding us of the exiles who had been exiled from the land, the division of the kingdom, as he welcomed Samaritans with love and grace, and even as he in some way reached out to Gentiles by healing some Gentile people. His ministry traced the story of the kingdom of Israel. And as Moses lived his last days, the Lord took him up Mount Nebo. And as I read about Mount Nebo, I wonder if that's not the same mountain that Satan took Jesus to. Then he said, if you bow down to me, I will give you all of this. It's so easy for us to think that that the land and the kingdoms and the wealth and the power of all of these things is the ultimate goal, is all that we should work for. And in some way we see in Moses that that, that achievement isn't the thing. That power, that, that prestige, all of that. 
We know that Moses is a righteous man. We hear that he's the closest to God that ever lived. He walked with God. He saw him face to face, it says. Yet he didn't see the realization of that dream. His whole life, as it says in the scripture, 120 years. So, and you're a spring chicken. 120 years of life. Much of it in exile, shepherding sheep in Midian, shepherding Israelites through the desert, seeing so much suffering and betrayal and brokenness. But God still is faithful, promising this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob, saying, I'll give it to your descendants. I've let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. And in some irony, it's only just for a short time in the time of Solomon and David that, that almost all of that land belongs to the kingdom of Israel. For a very short time in the history of the world. But for the rest of the time, the land never is theirs. Much of the time, they're under other powers. The kingdom is never fulfilled until Jesus becomes the cornerstone, the capstone of everything that is being built. When you look at those magnificent cathedrals, like Notre Dame, such a, a sad example but a beautiful example at the same time, the construction of Notre Dame began in 1163. 1163, that's a long time ago. But it was only completed in 1345. So I don't know what your maths is like, but that's, that's in the hundreds of years. The architect who designed that building might have seen the foundations laid, but never saw the final stones placed on the final spires. As Anne referred, in this simple church of ours, ours this magnificent church that we can't really go into at the moment because we'd be limited too much was laid the foundations by people who have already moved on before us. And we give thanks to God for those who have given us a good beginning. Moses didn't get to see the journey completed, but he had a vision from God to see the land of promise, a glimpse. And so much of our focus in life right now can be about what we want right now. It can be consumed by what we are struggling with right now. But we seldom learn to put off the now for later. And not just the now for later, you know, when we retire. But the now for later is in terms of a, of a legacy from generation to generation. In the 40 years of wilderness wandering, Moses and the Israelites we're building a solid foundation for the future. If they had just gone from Egypt to Israel, they would have just built another Egypt in Israel. But instead, they had to go on that detour. 40 years, every day, manna, quail, everything they needed, learning to depend on God. And in Deuteronomy chapter 11, we read how all of the revelation and all of the laws and the, the rituals that Moses learned was couched in the command, fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads, teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit down, when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. How do we make sure that we keep these traditions, these spiritual traditions, and sometimes we think of tradition as like a, a bad word, as some sort of uh, a restrictive thing that keeps us down, but the traditions that Moses received were healthy traditions that would build people up from generation to generation. For the children to remember, the Passover feast was for the children to hear the story about 
how we were slaves, but now we've been set free. An ability to pass on the legacy of God's grace to the next generation. Sometimes we have those detours. Sometimes we have to do difficult things in order to witness to the future. Those of you who live in Sunningdale are probably a bit tired of the Sandown Road and all the construction that's going on there. And I think that I, it's been going on there since I moved here. But I was blessed, I suppose, to move here just after they finished Bloberg Road and all the bus works there. And so I had nice buses and clear traffic, but shame you guys down that side are still waiting for that to finish. But the inconvenience of, of that struggle along the way can lead to future hopefulness. Maybe there won't be so much traffic when there's a nice double lane there, and there'll be less traffic here too because people will go that way instead of this way, and we'll all have some goodness. Sometimes we need to appreciate today's struggles for the way in which they can build a better tomorrow. Sometimes we need to think about how we need to rearrange life now to make things better in the next generation. And I think uh, just about every day I hear of folks going to Australia or New Zealand or and I guess most of the families here have some family somewhere in the world. Maybe some of them are listening online to our service this morning. But I always think if, if only we took all those air tickets and all of that money that went into buying uh, furniture overseas into changing where we are now, we'd see the car got tired. Give me a second. <laughs> is really to the Bluetooth device is connected uh, successfully. <laughs> well, there we go. Oh, no. If only we took the trouble of all that trouble to invest in changing here, we'd see so much difference. So for now, we've gone through this whole coronavirus pandemic. There's a great setback in the world, but there's an opportunity to start again in new ways. And this message that we hear from Moses from the scriptures is a message to us to, to put our minds to put our prayers to those new possibilities. This message of hope that you will go through times, in the case of Moses and the Israelites, it's 40 years in the wilderness. For us, we're moaning after seven months of pandemic. And, and we've got Mr. Delivery and Checker 6060 and whatever else you need. To take that time to think again about how God has provided for us. To take that time to think again about how we, as they say, build back better for the sake of God's kingdom. We continue from verse 7 of Deuteronomy 34. Moses was 120 years old when he died. He must have fought with the pension scheme. Yet his eyes were not weak or his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses whom the Lord knew face to face. He did all those signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his officials and to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power 
and perform the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. As sad as it was to say goodbye to Moses, just as God had been preparing Moses long before he was needed to take the people out of Israel, God was preparing Joshua to lead the people into the new land. He was filled with the spirit of wisdom as Moses had laid his hands on him. After Pentecost, we are all able to receive that same spirit of wisdom and power and grace to be the people that God has called us to be. Not just that, but to, to lead whoever we are called to lead into the land of promise that God has prepared for us. That's not necessarily a geographical reality. And it's not just pie in the sky when you die. But it's the life and the ethic and the beauty of the kingdom of God here in this place. And I invite us each as we're watching, as we live our lives, to work out how we can be that example. And I'm not speaking as one who says, oh, I'm such a good example of all of these things. I'm not. I sometimes think I'm too obsessed with the demands of today to think enough about next week, next month, next year, next generation, and what we are building on. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that over the past weeks we've been reminded of the story of Moses, of the story of Israel, but mostly the story of your faithfulness to your people. We sit here and we worship as people who have experienced your faithfulness. But we're not always as bold as we should be in speaking about it. So Lord, help us to pay attention to the deeds that you do, the miracles that you perform in our lives. And as we pay attention to them, to speak them out as words of testimony and praise to share with others around us in a wise and sensitive way the hope that we have found in you. And Lord, may this word of hope be like yeast in the world. May your kingdom expand as lives are changed and transformed and renewed. And may our lives be renewed by faith in you. You are good. You are faithful. Sometimes our struggles overwhelm us. But we know that in the end you always come through. Be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In closing, uh, I invite you to, though we can't take an offering, especially with those online, uh, to call to mind in your imagination the offering that you make towards God's kingdom and uh, as you do that to dedicate that to God as we sing our, our offertory and our closing hymn and then afterwards we'll pray for that offering uh, virtually Amen and if you need to give online please uh, use our banking details on the website and uh, we can also send those to you if you email us to ask for information also, the office is here on Tuesday and Thursdays, and you can also bring your offerings then. <clears throat> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. Oh, I'm all in the wrong key today. I'm just going to see what's happening. Blessed, blessed, blessed assured. Jesus is mine. Amen. Oh, gus, gus, gus. Blessed, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortune of glory divine heir of salvation purchase of God 
Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. I'm singing too high. I'm just going down one note. We're just going to stop for a second and come back to the right notes. <laughs> this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Raising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Raising my Savior all the day long. Amen. I invite us to stand as we dedicate our offering. Loving God, we stand as a sign that we know that everything that we have belongs to you, and of your own we give you. More important than our money, we offer you our lives. Take us to live your story. And Lord, let the offerings that we present to you today and every day be used to make disciples in your kingdom. Guide your church and its leadership in all the difficult decisions that need to be made in these difficult times. That, Lord, we give you gratitude and thanks for the ways that you have provided for us all these days. Continue to be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're going to take a moment, and we won't be able to join hands, but we'll reach out to each other as we say the grace. And I'm going to turn the camera around so that people online can join us. Bye-bye, online people. Thank you for joining us.